Hello, welcome to this panel on 3D printing at the Service of Society. My name is Luis Rodriguez. I'm a technician for Universal Accessibility of the Onte Foundation. And among other projects, I'm much, very much involved in 3D printing done at the foundation where we design and produce support products for our users. And we do this to make them available for everyone. All of these designs can be downloaded through the accessibility section of our webpage. And today we're going to talk exactly about this in about 3D printing. Now this technology has been around for 35 years now. The fact is that it's only been in the last five years that people have become more familiar with this technology or this has become more popular. Lately, I would say that in some fields, we're starting to become used to seeing products printed in 3D. And this is be, being considered uh, relatively normal, especially in certain fields. Now, this technology, like all technologies, are growing and improving at a very fast rate, especially in recent years. And that's what has maybe made it more popular because increasingly are there are better machinery, better materials, so that we can make more and better things. Now, up until now, or until relatively recently, one of the fields where 3D printing has been used is in industry, in making prototypes due to the advantages, for example, lowering costs and time to market. That's something that's very important for industry, but increasingly it's being used in more fields, ranging from architecture for modeling, construction, and now it's being used more construction is being used in 3D printing because it saves a lot of time, saves a lot on cost. And also in the world of entertainment, fine arts, and even in medicine. Now we can, we can print live tissue on 3D printers. And this could bring, uh, bring about a major change in the world of medicine as well. Now, in all of these fields, today, at the, in this panel session, we're going to talk about this 3D printing for support products. That is our area to create aids for people with disabilities. Now, within this field of support products, it, it provides 3D printing provides two advantages. One is the economic advantage. Today's printing, 3D printing is quite economical. And then the second advantage, which for me is extremely important, and that's being able to personalize that product. In other words, making what a person really needs. At the end of the day, people with special needs require products that are adapted very well to their individual needs. Working with standard products is much more difficult. And 3D printing does allow us to personalize the product. And it's quite simple to do, actually. And adapts very well to the needs of the user. Many of the people that are watching this now, you may be already familiar with 3D printing or at least you know that things are being done in this field, I imagine that maybe others of you didn't know that things are being done in this field. And today, in this panel session, we're going to talk a little bit about these issues and the things that are being done and what the future holds. And to do that, we have four 
experts who are going to tell us a little bit about their experiences. They're going to introduce their projects, which I think are very interesting. And many people can benefit from these because really at the end of the day, they're doing all of this, I would say in a very altruistic fashion. And at the, we're all, we will all benefit from what they're, from their work. We have Egoya and Alberto Martinez from 3D LAN. Hello. Hello. How is, how is everyone? We're very happy to have you with us on this panel. We're very happy as well. Thank you. Then we have Francisco Diaz from Alto Fabricantes. Very interesting project from Francisco. Hello, Francisco. Hello. Also very happy to be on this panel. Thank you. Our, it's the pleasure is ours, Francisco. And we have Alberto Vivas, who is from a group called Ayudame 3 Day, and is working on a very interesting project. Hello, Alberto. Hello. Very happy to be here with you. So thanks a million to all of you for having accepted our invitation to participate on this panel. And I would like you to introduce yourselves and your projects so that people can become familiar with who you are and what you're doing. And what awaits us in this world of 3D in support of society. So without further ado, Alberto and Igoy, we would like to listen to you now. Thank you. Well, thanks very much, Luis. My name is Agoy Escarga. I'm an industrial engineer. And after working for several years in the world of industry and in technological centers and research, on working on making tools, I met uh, two people that really changed my professional career. One is Isan and one other is Alberto Martinez, who's here with me now. And we had an idea, and that has become what is now a company. It's called 3D LAN, as we want to talk a little bit about what we're doing in our company. My name is Alberto Martinez. I studied fine arts. And I came into the world of uh, 3D printing through design. I was a, a web page designer. And it was about 10 years ago that we began with printing here in Bilbao. And I was always thinking about a real application of 3D printing. And as you said, Luis, the properties of 3D printing to, uh, to print, to manufacture things in a very cheap way Gave, and the ability to personalize products. Well, that really fit right into the world with people that have a disability. So we had a project that we put together for children that needed our artificial limbs, and we manufactured those in three days. And that's when we, we met and we saw that there was a lot of needs of this of this type. So we can talk a little bit about of how we work. Yeah, we're going to, Alberto, we're going to share the presentation with all of you. And we'll talk a little bit about what 3D LAN is all about, our company. Now, why 3D LAN? As Luis and Alberto both mentioned, we, we, we can manufacture personalized objects. And 3D LAN is fostering this diversity. And we wanted digitization and technology and 3D printing to facilitate or provide solutions for personalized support products for people with special needs. Now together with is now the technology has gotten cheaper. And so we wanted to implement this project and it became an association. At the end, we want to create solutions using 3D printing. 
and show the different personalized products that we make, and then we share these in a repository with the with a view to personalize each one of these objects for individual users. Here we have an example, one of the oldest examples. This is Celia. Celia is a young girl. She needed a special support for her feet on the wheelchair. And so we created this footrest. And this is, I think, a perfect example of how we create with the, co-create with the users and how we can share that then. Here we have an example of Yulin. Yulin has cerebral palsy and he uses a computer to communicate and to control that. He needs a special device. And we designed this uh, this button that, so that he can use the um, the computer. And this was created, we created this to as a drink holder. And this was another design that we used for the uh, for the wheelchair. We went through, I think, three improvements. It was the third design, actually. We saw that this worked. Very simple design here to hold the drink on a wheelchair. So we can do a lot of different things. We do the design. Here we have like um, a, a cast, a type of cast. This is a, a model that we put together some time ago for, for people who are having problems, maybe with a broken bone or with a wrist problem. And here we have our trajectory. Yeah, this is the birth of 3D Land, who started off as a, a company. We had some support, local support from the local government in the Basque country. And we've had a lot of contact with um, disability associations here in Vizcaya, in the Basque country, and more and more associations have joined our group. And since 2019, and then over 2020, which was a complicated year, as we know, we put together a project that we're going to present today, which is working with different vocational training centers together with these disability associations. And what we do is identify different needs of users from the associations, and we bring these to the classroom in these vocational training centers so that they can solve these problems using 3D printing. This is a really interesting project. So at the end of the course, what we do we have an a, event where we share our experiences and the results that we've obtained. We think this is very interesting. We're very happy. And in terms of looking to the future of these technologies or the application of these technologies, well, what we're doing is sharing this with the vocational training centers and to get them involved in the design of these of these um, objects, these support devices. What we're doing is creating an, a lot of designers with this social point of view of technology. And I think that we're going to need them in future years when we want to do more and more things. We're going to need that support, the support of those people. New designers who will, uh, for the for society. So this is just one of the examples that we've done in our association, 3D Line. Thank you very much, Egoyu and Alberto. I think that this, you're doing very, very interesting work. So and that is benefiting many people. Let's see later if we have time to answer maybe some questions because 
uh, I'm sure that some people are going to have questions. I'm going to give the floor now to Francisco, and he's going to tell us a little bit about the project that he's working on in Alto Fabricantes, self manufacturers, so that you can understand that. And I'm sure that we'll be very happy to uh, to hear about that. And we'll probably have some questions for Francisco as well. Hello. Well, my name is Francisco Diaz. I'm a coordinator and researcher in Alto Fabricantes. In uh, and you're seeing me, but we have a 15-member team here that's been working for more than five years in Madrid and coming up with a lot of solutions and alternatives in 3D printing and different types of support products. Now, with the whole history of 3D printing and support objects, I began when I was finishing my studies at the University of Seville, where that's where we had the first 3D printers, actually, in Spain. And we've been working, working for several years, making small things, experimenting. When a family was going to have a child, for example, they had a problem, a hand, a problem, uh, a problem with the, the hand of one of the uh, one of their children. So we started to do some research. We saw that there were solutions, and from there we generated a project. We started to um, to work on that, and we formed a community of people that wanted to think of how to do things in a different way. And this gave rise to the generation of solutions that came from the users themselves. And so that was the, how our group was born. Self, this self-manufacturing or auto fabricantes group was formed. I'm gonna put my presentation on the screen. I hope you can see it. Perfect, yes, we can see it. Well, here, I'm gonna tell, tell you the story of Judith. These are two children, one's from Madrid and Janit is from Colombia, and they were with us, and they, and they changed our company, and I think that we maybe have helped them improve their life a little bit. And so this was a kind of, through, through the research that we've done, and providing tools through 3D printing and other types of manufacturing, but especially this technology that has been, or that allows us to share knowledge very easily. It's flexible, it's cheap, and it's we can, it can be personalized. And we can use many different types of materials. We work through workshops, creative workshops with the users, with the families who are playing trust and design is all is, is very uh, important and at the end of the day we have a lot of experts in 3d design 3d printing and all types of engineering and but they're the experts so we establish this trust relationship that results in innovation because they the children are the ones that have the solutions to their own problems because they know their environment and their context and so we work together. So we did this, um, these mechanical limbs, these prothesis. We worked with the university, uh, uni the, Poly the Polytechnic University of Madrid. And we had four research projects uh, open for artificial um, arms, legs, a special wheelchair and 3D printing. And you can imagine that that was very complex project. And we've been moving forward with each one of the projects and collaborating, bringing all of the know-how from the universities towards meeting these real challenges. We're collaborating with other associations at national level, like the, the association in the city of Cuenca, for adapted music to be able to play in an orchestra. And we're 
y que sea también fácilmente reproducible y replicable y obviamente and we make our products replicable and when this myoelectric prosthesis is a, an extremely complex project but here we're moving forward with this myoelectric prosthesis and to make this accessible at all different levels. Now, in this innovation that I talked about before, when you ask a child, how do you want your prothesis to look? He said, I want a hand. I want to be able to play basketball. And that's where we came up with the Super Giz project. And these are types of gloves that we've manufactured. And that gadget it does helps the child carry out that activity. We've had really fun workshops with six or seven children, and year after year we've been adding more and more functionalities so that now it has more than 30 different functionalities. And there's an online design so that any person in the world can use this. And it's, it's designed for 3D printing and in open code. So anyone has access to this. There's a lot of institutions and projects then participate in this. And so summing up, there's a lot of hours of work, a lot of volunteers from a lot of people that have been collaborating in this project. People in other countries as well. In Mexico, we have a project. And the next challenge that we're looking at for the future and in the present is a scientific a medical certification of our projects and quite different, difficult, but the standardization for the CE um, um, brand mark. And just wanted to leave you with this uh, video about Janet and her smile with the first time that she used her artificial limb. Thank you. Thank you very much, Francisco, for that wonderful presentation, and especially for the great work that you are doing uh, while helping a lot of people. Thank you. Now, uh, Guillermo will talk to us about uh, their project from Ayudamed 3D where there are lots of people that they're helping out and who is profiting from the work that you're doing. Go ahead, Guillermo, you have the floor. Again, thank you very much for inviting me. I'm very lucky to be working with the organizations that you mentioned. These are wonderful projects that I uh, very well acquainted with. Uh, you have inspired me. Uh, many, many times. I'm going to tell you what we do at uh, Ayudamed 3D. We started in 2017. I'm an industrial organization engineer. Uh, I have a passion for creating projects. I, I've i worked in the uh, world of toys before. So I, I love to be able to design new projects, new things through 3D. Uh, through 3D printing. I was a consumer for 3D of 3D printing products in 2012, 2015, and that's when I started learning about this technology. We've acquired this knowledge of how we can do social uh, things through 3D printing. I started with uh, by uh, making a saving drone. It was fully 3D printed, fully automatized. It could go into places where people couldn't access. And this is something that I did for my uh, mass, for my final degree project. 
So it was a way to help people out. It's something that I keep doing now, but I'm also doing, involved in this other project. I'm going to be sharing my screen with you and I will keep telling you things. In the end, Ayudame 3D, what we do is uh, using uh, new technologies to help out people who need it, uh, uh, vulnerable members of society, people who cannot afford a device that can help them out in their day-to-day -day lives. Some are uh, amputees or people who are missing a limb and they cannot afford a prosthesis, as I said. So we try to reach anywhere in the world and be able to uh, provide people all around the world with uh, what it is that they need. So we began in a trip to Kenya and we brought five uh, prosthetic arms using these models of Enable the Future. Uh, it's possible to open and close uh, their hands. It's a very basic model, but we are moving forward and improving this uh, initial design. Then we started to redesign all of the models that we had fabricated and using the feedback from, from the users. So we created these new models. Each, uh, each of these uh, products needs to be fully customized. We started taking into account aesthetics. We use uh, knuckles. We, we put in uh, the color that this person decides to have, whether it's their own skin color or a different one. All of this is fully free for people who need it. And right now we're working in 55 different countries and we deliver over 350 arms each year. We not only have improved how we do things, but we're trying to promote the social value of technology. So we not only deliver arms, now we're delivering 3D printers. We have trained these two people, Lydia and Nelson, in 3D printing. So they're already printing out uh, arms for people who need it, who live around them. Other people who might need our help, they might not know us or know how to reach us. Well, they have now they have people close to them that can help them out. These two guys have uh, great knowledge and expertise on this field right now. So we're not only staying in Kenya or in Spain, we're trying to reach any country that might need us. We have developed a very simple uh, logistical process. We have our 100 partners in Spain who are experts in 3D printing. They've uh, produced these devices. We provide them with the materials that they need. They prepare the package and we manage the logistics from their home to the final destination. And we provide the people in the destination country with all of the information and all the instructions they might need for their uh, arm to work properly. We're also developing a uh, volunteering uh, training sessions. We also work with uh, physical rehabilitation professionals we not only want people to be able to grasp a um, bottle or a glass, we want them to be uh, more independent, fully autonomous, for them to not need someone else to help them out uh, on their day-to-day -day lives. We are not only working with only 3D arms, but we're also working on other type of devices. It's uh, arms are the ones that uh, we produce the most through the pandemic. I know that there are no 3D printer in Spain that did not uh, provide uh, face masks as the ones we can see here, uh, these uh, shields that uh, health workers are using. So we try to reach uh, in small pharmacies, in, in small towns, in remote towns, we deliver over 20,000. We had already done this. Uh, we already had this 3D lab in Kenya. 
So they were able to uh, produce them as well in Kenya. So if it was difficult to find them here, imagine in the Rift Valley, it was even more difficult. So many of these uh, awards that we re that we have received is a way for us to be uh, better known, to be able to reach a larger number of people. And this has also helped us uh, to receive funding to be able to keep working and to be able to provide our products for free. We received this award, the Fenin Award for the best social sanitary institution in Spain. This is wonderful. We're here to help anyone who might need us. We're trying to keep moving forward to develop new ideas. We uh, produce prototypes with things that are already there. We don't want to start from scratch. We've been able to create this uh, device uh, for people who uh, don't have an elbow, and this can provide them uh, the articulation that they need. We have here a, a peel uh, holder for people with Parkinson. It doesn't matter how much you shake it, it will only uh, provide one pill. So we're trying to reach more people to do things uh, that can help uh, the most people possible. We're also doing the chemo box uh, project. It was self-managed uh, by anyone who was able to provide these devices. These are uh, bags that, co that cover, they're boxes that cover the bags for chemotherapy for children in hospitals. And we were able to, to print any any illustration that they might like. We're doing this so any family can uh, ask for them and we can provide them with it. Everything is free, everything is wonderful. We're super happy we're able to deliver this. We don't matter, it doesn't matter where you're from, uh, what you have, how are we funding this project? We uh, do uh, social corporate responsibility uh, with companies, with schools, and we want people to change their minds, both in companies and in a school, so they can see that technology is a means to help others. You have information about us in our website, and we are designers, so we are now producing uh, solidarity projects. We have bio doctors, designers, uh, art designers, all of them can provide these designs. We get companies, foundations, universities can generate this type of products and this helps us to fund Ayudametres there. Right now we're in the uh, you know, wonderful loft that is provided by uh, the municipality of Madrid. We have lots of uh, 3D printers. This is where I am. I don't know if you can hear the noise, but the printers are working non-stop. So we're also trying to find the sponsors so that we can work in an open space where people can come in and help out with us. Sorry, uh, there are, we're having some building works in our, in our space. A beautiful project is to have these devices for children who want to have a certain uh, aspect. So this is a Spider-Man arm. So when uh, one of these uh, children, when they grow and they need a bigger size, they need uh, a different uh, uh, decoration, we can provide them with what they need. So here's an example.
muchísimas gracias Guillermo por, por la presentación y la verdad es que es impresionante lo que, estáis, lo que estáis haciendo todos. Tú al final has tocado ese tema porque a mí la primera pregunta que se me ocurre haceros es ¿estáis dedicando un esfuerzo, un trabajo, un tiempo, incluso unos medios económicos a hacer cosas para ayudar a los, a los demás? Además me gusta mucho esa, esa frase última que has, que has dicho, Guillermo, de ayudar es demasiado fácil como para no hacerlo. ¿no? Entonces, eh, tú has tocado ahí un, un poquito el tema, pero a mí un, la primera pregunta que se me ocurre You've touched upon this subject. Eh, yo tengo acceso a todo eso que vosotros estáis haciendo. But do I puedo have access to everything that you're saying? I can use an arm, the technical aids that I can receive from 3D land for anything that I might need. And it doesn't uh, cost me a penny. How are you funding all of this? Do you have uh, public entities or private companies? I realize that you put in a lot of time and effort and it requires a, a big financial funding. We're not talking about millions here. But, well, everything has a cost. Can you answer me rather quickly? Because, you know, uh, otherwise we'll run out of time. But I would like to know how that process works and uh, how would you like things to work in this sense? Any, anyone can answer. We can start if you want to. Uh, the project has been in collaboration with disability associations and vocational training centers. We've been doing this for three years. It's co-funded by the BBK, uh, this bank foundation. And it's because of them that we are able to do this type of projects is a very important part of what we do. We are a very small association, for, so it's very difficult for us to be able to access the different programs that are offered by the foundations. We were able to receive an aid from uh, the municipality of Vizcaya Since we lived and worked always in the in our local towns, we are able to do some workshops, but it's difficult for us to receive funding. So it's difficult for us to get more ambitious. We have another project which is to adapt surfing for people with disabilities. We've been able to receive um, the help of the local government. Well, it is a very important work and it's what allows us to, or to be able to have the resources and the people to do it. I don't know the rest of you, what's your perspective? I see that you are not only designing and working, but you also uh, try to, to find the funding that you need. Francisco, Guillermo? Yes, well, it's the same. There's uh, a lot of fundraising, trying to find funding through public institutions, companies, and it's the framework that we need to have for this. It's very difficult. It's not easy at all to find a public institution that is happy to trust us and provide us funding for in the long term. We got lucky because we were able to work in Media Lab Prado in Madrid, through Madrid's uh, 
municipality. We've been able to have uh, resources to do workshops with families, but the volunteering for research and development, that was all volunteer work. And in the short term, it will keep being something that we cannot pay for because we don't have the level of funding to cover it. We receive uh, funding from different foundations. We are all, always trying to, to reach different foundations and organizations to receive a small uh, amounts of funding. And we're always fighting to, to reach this funding, at least to keep us working for six months to a year. Guillermo, I, I saw you were nodding. I assume you're having the same issues. Yes, uh, we might be engineers, uh, 3D printers, but maybe we don't know how to deal with bureaucracy. It's terrible. They need to help us out. For these institutions, it should be an achievement to be able to reach so many people and to develop these uh, wonderful projects. I would like to make a call for attention to have people help us out. What we want to do is help people out, but we need help in fighting bureaucracy. We spend lots of time filling out paperwork and all of this time that but it only works to receive funding for a couple of months, but we need to keep working on that all the time. We're always thinking long term. That's why we try to collaborate with schools and business to prepare a business model that is scalable. So we try these programs and with this uh, solidarity products. So we don't need to be so dependent on public grants and help. Right now, uh, well, what we do is right now it's a novelty, but over time it will no longer be such a novelty and it will be more difficult to uh, receive the awards that we have been receiving. So we work with different organizations. As I mentioned, we have our little mascot and we want to raise awareness about what we do. So we do all of this work that I mentioned with companies and, and schools to, to receive uh, funding for our projects. And we're a team and well, you can leave out you can make a living out of doing this uh, wonderful work of helping people out. Well, it's uh, wonderful, it's uh, amazing all of the work that you do. You not only spend time designing, designing and printing, you also dedicate all of this time to fill up paperwork, all of this work that as technical people usually don't enjoy doing. I think what you do has an even bigger value. Unfortunately, we are running out of time. I would love to spend hours and hours listening to what you do. But I would really like to say that I greatly appreciate you finding the time to be here uh, with us today, for finding the time to showing us uh, your projects. I would love to encourage both public and private institutions to support you more and more. And also to encourage individuals to join these uh, projects for them to, to become volunteers as well. I think we can help out in many different ways. At least we can help out a little bit. Again, thank you very much for being here with us today. And I hope we can uh, see you again on again. Thank you and a big hug to all of you. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.